Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me again this week. I'm hopefully... Whoops. That's a good start. Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully this week we will be finishing off the Blood Angels Combat Patrol so that next time we can move on to something a bit different. But I am going to really quickly run over all the different things that I've added since last time and then we're going to hopefully finish painting most of them and then next week I can give some sort of showcase of everything. The thing I'm most excited about today is finishing the Primaris Librarian, which I haven't really done very much of at all. I really only put his torso and legs together. So we'll hopefully get a good look at that stuff today and we'll really make ahead on finishing this whole thing up. So stick with me and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so since we haven't really done very much with the Librarian, I thought what we would do is begin by finishing this guy off construction wise and then see what we can do with paint. Uh, thank you guys for your comments in terms of modular building and painting tips and stuff. That stuff goes a long way. What have you noticed about not priming before you uh, construct models? Um, I did reply saying that I learned that the hard way, but obviously there's no going back. So thank you for that tip and I won't be doing it from now on, apart from the models I've already primed and planned to build in the future. So we're going to see how well this goes in terms of construction with these pre-primed models so we can finish building this guy and get him painted. So first of all, when I'm over here, I'm going to cut out the pieces that we're going to use, which will be, well I mean most of these because it's kind of, they're sort of mandatory parts. And people recommend that you don't cut too close to the piece, but I reckon if, no, if you're careful enough you should be okay. And again, we're not going for competition pieces here, we're just going for the basics and how someone like me approaches the basics. So I'm just going to really carefully run around and cut out all the components that we're going to need. There might be some extra but I'll just throw them in my bits box. Um, if you guys want to see anything like the bits box that I have or any of the spare models and stuff that I leave lying around, do um, leave a comment asking that and I will show you sort of spares and things. I don't have like a pile of shame or anything, all the models I showed off in my last video are all the models that I currently have so there's no extra stuff but I do have spare parts and things it'd be interesting to see what you guys thought of the the weird combos and things that I've been left with after a few months of being a beginner um other th well one thing with this guy is I don't like the skin or the flesh heads of Space Marines just a personal preference thing so if I can, I will always choose a helmeted Space Marine head. Um, again, it's just a personal preference thing, but we um, pretty much on this channel, you probably won't see me paint a flesh head, mostly because like flesh colors aren't that exciting to me. I like the armor highlights and stuff. I will have to learn how to do flesh colors at some point. Um, but as far as I'm concerned right now, I'm not really all that excited to learn that kind of thing. So. <clears throat> so for now I'm just going to keep doing helmeted heads and someday maybe we'll practice doing flesh heads together. So we'll pop out this flesh librarian's head and put him in with the other bits and leave it over here. So I like the sprues to make sure you recycle that in the bin. And then let's look at what we've got. So I mean yeah again thanks for the tips last week in terms of well, not last week, but on my previous videos. Let me get my file. Yes, thank you for the tips on previous videos about not priming, not pre-priming my sprues. I mean, it's obviously a little bit too late for these guys and one of my other models, but what I like to do with these pre-primed ones is just a light bit of filing around the joint like this really gentle just so you can expose some of the <clears throat> the plastic underneath which will then bond more effectively with the cement again it's a little bit counterproductive um, right, we're just gonna file it down very gently so it does respond more effectively to the, the bonding agent and just check here This series has probably been quite an interesting insight into my recent learning curve with Space Marines, and you'll see later 
when we go to paint the other stuff that I'm going to use some slightly different techniques to finish them off. So it'll be interesting if you watch this from start to finish, watching all the things that I've learned in the background, um, which I'm going to bring into future videos on painting techniques that I like. Um, so if you've found it interesting the way that my my approach to painting has changed recently, um, it'll be your observations will be well welcome, I guess. But yeah, now that I know you guys are, um, well, commenting, I mean, it took me a while to get back to them because I, for some reason, didn't get emailed when your comments came through. But now that I know you're kind of, you guys are at least interactive, the, the very few of us that there are in this very small community, um, is there anything you kind of, oh, come on, is there anything specific that you would like to see that isn't really covered anywhere else. I mean, like most people with a tiny YouTube channel, I'm confined by budget. I'm, I do have jobs, two jobs, um, obviously, but I bought a house and stuff this year, so my, my budget's not enormous, but I do have some. So if, is there anything that you kind of want me to cover, or if there's like one of the series I talked about before like in my previous video is there oh, is there anything you want to see or a way you want me to approach something even like the you know the Gilliman model or anything like that if there's a specific way you want to see things done feel free to let me know because it'd be if I know that I'm doing things in a way that's <clears throat> more fun for you guys it's gonna make me happy as well so Okay, so my fat gorilla hands made the most heretical display of attaching that crest Aquila type thing. So hopefully that, hopefully we never see anything like that again. Please forgive me. Um, again, gorilla hands. We will get better. But <laughs> bear with me. So I'm going to leave him like that for now. Put all his little pieces together. And we'll move on and we'll look at the normal Space Marines. So you can see from this I have different sort of levels of Space Marine completion here. They're all, I mean, in the showcase video which I'll do once I finish this series I'm going to show you. I still have some areas to fix, as you see from the different coloured greaves there. Um, I kind of like how this acrylic has turned out even though it was accidental part of my highlight process. That's going to change but I'll show you that, how that all turns out in the end. These guys I'm going to finish off camera. And I will show you them whenever everything's done. This guy, we're just going to paint up. So this guy, we're going to paint up now. 
Um, I just follow the instructions. There's nothing on this that's really special or different. The Blood Angels Combat Patrol or the Combat Patrol specific instructions tell you how to build this guy exactly as he appears as is. Um, again, thank you for pointing out not to prime before building because look at all these horrible little broken areas of filing and stuff. I will re undercoat when necessary and um, you'll see what that turns out like. And then we have this guy who I've already done the base layer on. There are a couple of these guys who I've done base layers on. I've done some of their, I've added their final parts like the power packs, the pauldrons, the heads and the arms. And I've done the base layer on. You can see it's like a different, you can see the shades of red on these two guys and how the gradient on the way up just turns into a flat red instead of being highlighted. I've also, just for a bit of difference, added a Death Watch pauldron. My brother had some spare Death Watch parts left over in a special kit, so I took one of his pauldrons to put on that guy. So what we're hopefully going to do is finish these two guys off and you get to see how they look when they're completed. Okay, so <clears throat> you can see from where he's resting that I will be using my normal palette. I'm kind of, I've, you've seen my sort of desk setup and stuff, but I'm kind of having a bit of a fallout with my wet palette because it hasn't blown my mind. I don't know if I talked much about it before, but I'll maybe do a comparison sometime of the difference between the wet palette and the dry normal palette like this one. But the, the, the wet one just kind of, no, just doesn't impress me. I thought it would be really good. And a lot of people say that they are a different sort of, um, just a different painting experience really. But for me, just kind of underwhelming. Um, again, if you, if you have a particularly hefty opinion about wet palettes, do feel free to let me know. But yes, now all I'm doing here is very loosely doing a coat of Mephiston Red to get this started. I watered it down a bit so it's not too thick. So hopefully if it needs any retouches, well, it will need retouches because it isn't thick, but well, it'll be easy enough to retouch without going too heavy or dark or crusty. So... One thing I've been thinking about is, well, obviously you can probably tell by how long I've been into 40k that Astartes was my first experience of the universe. Or oh, I mean, not, not my first ever, but it was the one that kind of I made me get it. I got 40k after that. I remember, I think I was nine. When I was like nine years old, I was uh, in Waterstones in somewhere somewhere in Northern Ireland. Uh, Ballymena or Belfast, one of the two. Seems to be the only two I think are really, the only two I think I really know about, to be honest. Yeah, I was one of the, one of the Waterstones here, and I remember seeing this book with a guy in a, big robot suit on the front. <laughs> Obviously at the time I had no idea what it was. It was a uh, Horace Heresy novel. I think looking back, because I remember even, you know, as many years on, like third, four, 15, 15 years later or whatever, 15, 16, 13, don't even know what age I am. <laughs> this many years on, I still remember enough from the blurb on the back of the book to tell that it was about, uh, it was from the point of view of a chaos marine during the heresy. And I remember, because I was so young, I was with my dad and I said, um, can I get this? This sounds so cool. Like, my dad is a big 
influence on the things that I like because growing up we used to watch you know Terminator um, Alien Predator everything in between Robocop um, basically anything with aliens robots any sci-fi that we could get our hands on anything that he grew up with I grew up with which has given me yeah, a really good rounded uh, sci-fi upbringing which I'm really happy with it's brought me a lot of joy but 40k was one of those things that we never into just don't know I don't know why it wasn't you know it wasn't any bad reason it wasn't anything like that I did uh, no it wasn't like you know my parents didn't want me to get into it or anything because obviously you know you can't watch Terminator as a kid and be told that you can't get into anything else but yeah, big into sci-fi. Never got into 40k. Just coincidence, I think. Honestly, I'm messing this up real bad. Uh, so for years, I knew about 40k, and I had seen all these. Well, space Marines look cool to most people, especially somebody like me. Like I'm, I'm an amateur strongman, so. Space Marines to me, big huge dudes fighting aliens is always going to look cool <laughs> to someone like me. So it kind of always intrigued me over the years that it might be something I was interested in, but it, because it was mostly like a board game, quote unquote, not obviously a board game, tabletop game and board game are two very different things. Because they're two very different things, well, because it was a tabletop game, which I also didn't get into until I was like 21 or whatever uh, didn't really see that there was an element to it that I could get into and obviously I mean painting was just something I got into by chance when it came to 40k it wasn't something I ever anticipated being comfortable with or happy with but here we are uh, but when Astartes came out my mate from my band at university showed me it and I was sort of blown away because I kind of all of a sudden was like right that's what this is and although the the kind of consumable media zeitgeist of 40k doesn't all uh, compare to the, um, the stuff that, well, the level of quality that we see in Astartes, because it all doesn't sort of line up with that. Like, I obviously, when it was, when I was done watching, it was sort of like, right, what next? So, when I saw it the first time, I remember being like, right, this is, this is 40k. And I kind of understood what the appeal was because it wasn't just a, a it wasn't just a tabletop game. <laughs> because it wasn't just a tabletop game; it was something with clearly a lot of story going on. So I, I mean, over the years I've been begin to my wikis I've made a lot of additions and changes to the Half-Life wiki recently but I've always went to the wiki for different things I've been interested in just to try and find out a bit more about stuff so as soon as the studies was over I was like right let's go figure out what the hell this is because I am buggered if I'm not gonna get into this medium of big robot guys fighting aliens and stuff <laughs> um, obviously I mean obviously I know I know now that there's more to it than that but I was content for it to just be that in the beginning so I went on the 40k wiki and I was reading and reading and reading I think there are two 40k wikis which is was another great sign for me because I was like this is big and I love things with lots of lore and background so I was on the 40k wiki and I just read everything that there is to read about Space Marines and um, was instantly like, you know, desire to know more intensifies. So I 
I just, I, I started looking to see, I remembered the novel that I saw when I was a kid. And I said to myself, right, what if we go try to find that novel? So I, I looked up Warhammer novels. I just Googled Warhammer novels. I didn't know about the Black Library at this point. And lo and behold, when I found the Black Library, I think my heart exploded a little bit. Um, and I, I started buying whatever books I could find on the Ultramarines. Because naturally, the Ultramarines are your first the first thing you see when you enter the universe. And I read some Graham McNeil stuff, Guy Healy, and things like that, and was instantly like, more, more, more. So I've, I've read, in the past year, I have read more than a dozen 40k novels, different types of styles, and from about different eras and stuff. And what I kind of wanted to know in the most roundabout way ever, I wanted to ask you guys what you're reading. <laughs> what your favourite books were. And what kind of books you would recommend to me. I am a big Space Marines guy. I hope it doesn't make me basic. <laughs> uh, but I'm big into Space Marines. Um, if there are any good Space Marine novels that you think I haven't read... Give me your recommendations because I'm going to give you mine. I'm going to do. If you want. Oh, also, yeah, if you want to see videos on books on 40k novels, give me a shout because I will talk about them until my tongue falls out. So, but at the minute, I am reading God Blight, the Guy Haley, the third in the installment in the Dark Imperium series. If you haven't read the Dark Imperium series, I recommend that you do because. It, to me, is the Astartes of 40k novels. It just goes to show what a 40k, 40k novel could be if they were all, you know, on the same, if they were all at, the, at their best. The God Blight is just something special, truly. You, you, you can tell when you're reading it. It's, it's just the way it's all written. I mean, again, it's a bit basic. It's all Gilliman and... The ultramarines and stuff but the theories and the theology and stuff in it all fantastic just really good uh, i've done that first coat of memphis and red on this guy gonna move on to someone else but everything that's in god blight is fantastic for anybody who's truly interested in the nature of godhood and how those more um those more interesting characters see themselves and are seen by others. So yeah, one of my big recommendations is get Gone Blight if you can. Also been reading, started the Black Legion series by Aaron Dembski Bowden. He apparently lives not that far from me, which is cool. Hopefully meet him someday, possibly. I've also read Gift, uh, The Emperor's Gift. Um, and I think, in my in my opinion, one of the best 40k novels you can read, uh, Spear of the Emperor. That was one of the first ones I read. Uh, still haven't really paralleled it, apart from with God Blight. God Blight is up there. But in terms of the best 40k recommendation I can make, Spear of the Emperor. Because it's just the perfect depiction of what a space marine can be from the perspective of someone whose whole life is just helping a space marine. So if you're big into space marines like me, get your hands on Spear of the Emperor and give it a read because, oh boy, is it good. But yeah, I'm just going to speed through the rest of the base coat on these guys after talking for so long. So that is all the base layer done on those <clears throat> I also have one or two others that I haven't fully finished yet but I'm going to build them and do them as part of the showcase when I'm finished but <clears throat> next I'm just going to show you on one marine how I will go about finishing things off I think because he's my favourite I'm going to choose this guy here and we're going to move ahead with him so I'm going to say goodbye to these guys and you'll see them in the showcase when everything's finished 
and we're going to go through all the finishing techniques because I think he has just about everything that I might need to work on. So we're going to finish him off. Paint-wise, hopefully you'll see all the different techniques I use to get him finished up. Okay.